In this video I'm going to go through all the things that you need to be able to do in order to pass the Year 6 SATs paper and more specifically the algebra questions because they tend to be the hardest questions that you get on a SATs paper and a lot of people find them very challenging so I'm going to go through all these points here, the bullet points from the national curriculum, all the things you need to be able to do, explain them in plain English and give you some examples as well so that you can go ahead and work on those for when you take your test. Okay, the first bullet point, express missing number problems algebraically. Looking at the example we've got, Jack has N pounds after his birthday. Alan has three more pounds than Jack. Write an expression for how many pounds Alan has. So when we have an expression, that means we don't need to have an equal sign. The equal sign is used for equations. So all we need to do is to work out how many pounds Alan's going to have, and it says he has three more than Jack. Jack has N, so we have N pounds plus three more. So that's an expression for how much money Alan has got, N plus three. For the second example, sometimes you'll get it presented like this. It's asking you to work out what X, Y, and Z are based on the information that you've been given here. So X plus 5 equals 15. Now, all you need to do is to do the inverse. So X plus 5 is 15. Well, 15 subtract 5 should give us our answer for X. Um, so 15 subtract 5 is 10. So if x is 10, what I always do is if I get my answer, I put it back into the equation and see if it makes sense. So if x is 10, 10 plus 5 equals 15. Yep, that makes sense. So x must be 10. Similarly with y, y subtract 5 equals 15. So if I add 5 onto 15, we'll get 20. So y, if y is 20, 20 subtract 5 equals 15. Yep, that's right. So y must be 20. And lastly, z divided by 5 equals 15. So I need to do the inverse again. 15 multiplied by 5 is 75. So z being 75, if we were to divide that by 5, just double check. How many 5s going to 7 is 1, carry the 2. How many 5s going to 25, it's 5. So that's correct. Z is 75 because our answer was 15 when we divided it by 5. So our answer is 75. Looking at the next point then is using simple formulae. So looking at the example, we have three circles here. Three circles, well, circle plus a circle plus a circle equals 33. And our next equation is a circle plus a triangle plus a circle equals 30. So what's the value of the triangle? What we need to do first is to work out the value of one circle. Because once we've got that, we can add them together and work out what we've got missing. What we need to do then is say, well, there's three circles that make 33. So if I was to divide that by 3, I should get the value of each one. 33 divided by 3, you should know, is 11. If I just put a circle here, equals 11. Just double check. 11 plus 11 is 22, plus another 11 is 33. So we know that the circle is worth 11. Once we've got that, we need to substitute that into this equation here. So 11 plus something plus 11 equals 30. Right, well, we have two circles, so 11 and 11 makes 22. So if we have 22 plus a triangle, which we don't know the, the value of yet, equals 30. So all we need to do now is say, well, what do I need to add on to 22 to make 30? And the answer would be 8, so the triangle is worth Eight, that's the value. What I always recommend doing is, if you're sure you've got the answer, put it back into the equation. 11 plus 8, which is 19, plus 11 again, does it equal 30? Yes, it does. 19 plus 11 equals 30. So we know we've got our answers right for that. The next thing you need to be able to do is to generate and describe linear number sequences. Uh, this is probably the easiest element of algebra in many respects. So let's have a look at an example. Fill in the missing numbers in the sequence. So all we need to do is to work out how much is it going up by. Well, if we were to count on three more, we get to four. Count on another three, we get to seven. So it's going up in threes. Add another three. Seven add three is ten. Add another three makes thirteen. Add another three makes sixteen. Add three makes nineteen. Yep, so it's going up in threes. That's all we need to do is fill in those missing spaces there. 
The next thing you need to be able to do, this is probably the hardest thing, is to find pairs of numbers that satisfy an equation with two unknowns. Now I'm going to go through the, this example. Um, it is quite complicated and it is quite long, so we're going to break it down and I'll give you some pointers so that if you came across a question like this, you'd know how to answer it. Okay, an orange weighs 20 grams more than a banana. How much does one banana weigh? It's showing you a scale and as you can see, it's balanced. So we have two bananas here and we have an orange and 100 grams. The only bit of information we've been given is that an orange weighs 20 grams more than a banana. So it's, it's asking for the weight of the banana. So that's the ultimate answer that we need to get is what does one banana weigh? What we need to do then is to try and convert this into an algebraic equation. Now you should know that an equation is something that's balanced, which is very handy for us because as you can see, our scales are balanced. So let's try and put this into an algebraic equation. Let's use the letter B for bananas. So we have two bananas here. So I would write 2B and that's going to equal exactly the same weight as this um, is an orange so I'll use an O but I'll put a line through it just so that we don't get confused and think it's a zero plus a hundred grams at the moment that's all we know is that 2b equals an orange plus a hundred grams they're exactly the same weight looking at the information we've been given we know that an orange weighs 20 grams more than a banana so you could say that O for orange is the same as one banana plus 20 grams more. So if I just put one banana, that would be B plus 20 grams. Now that's definitely correct because it tells us an orange is the same as a banana with 20 grams more. It's 20 grams more than a banana. Now in order for us to work out how much the bananas weigh, we're going to need to substitute this equation into the equation we've already got. That's how we're going to find the two unknowns that we need to know. So we said then orange equals a banana plus 20 grams. So if we were to put banana plus 20 grams in this space where the orange is, that's still allowed. That makes sense. An orange is the same as a banana plus 20. So we can remove that and put banana plus 20 in instead. So let's rewrite this equation. Two bananas is the same as, now we're going to swap this out for banana plus 20, B plus 20 grams, and then plus 100 grams, we can't remove that. That's now balanced, so two bananas equals B plus 20 grams plus 100 grams. And the final step now is to get all the letters to one side and all the numbers to another. And the way we do that is to move letters and numbers around so that we get that balance. Now, I want all the letters on, on this side, on the left. I'm going to move this B across the equal sign. And when you move something across the equal sign, its sign changes. Because it's a B, it's a positive B, when it goes over the equal sign, it will become a negative B. And that's the same for anything. If it's positive and you move it over the equal sign, it becomes negative. If it's negative and you move it over the equal sign, it becomes positive. That's always the case. So if we move this B across, what we're going to end up with is 2B subtract B, because it's now a minus B, equals 20 grams plus 100 grams. Now you should know that if you have 2B and you subtract a B, that's actually going to turn into 1B. because You've got two lots of B, take one of them away, you end up with just B. So B equals, and then we add up the weights, 20 grams at 100 grams is 120 grams. So our equation now shows that banana equals 120 grams. That is the weight of one banana. And what I always say is put that back into the equation. Does it make sense? Well, two bananas, if they're 120 grams each, would be 120 at 120 which is 240. Now, in order for this to be the case, this needs to add up to 240 as well. We've been told that an orange is 20 grams more than a banana. Well, if our banana is 120, that must mean that's 140. So 140 plus 100 also makes 240. 
both sides make 240. So therefore the weight of a banana is 120 grams. Now don't panic if you found that difficult. These are, in my opinion, the hardest questions that you'll get on a year six SATS maths paper. And some years they don't even come up. But my advice would be if you get a question like this, write it out in a simple equation like we did there, 2B plus orange plus 100 grams. And then substitute in other equations so that you can get just one letter and then do a bit of fiddling to see if you can get the answer correct. And it's not the end of the world if you get that question wrong because it will probably only be worth a few marks. Okay, lastly, we're going to look at enumerating possibilities of combinations of two variables. And all that really means is, looking at our example, you may get given a list of shapes or uh, objects and it will add up to a total. And it will say give three or several possible answer combinations for the circle and triangle in this case. So all we need to do is say, well, what could these be worth? And really, it's the case of trial and error. You could say, well, um, if that circle is worth two, let's put that in here. Two. What would the triangles be worth? Well, if that's two, uh, we need eight more to make ten. So they've got to be the same. Uh, it will be four then. So two plus four makes six, plus another four would make ten. So the triangle would be worth four. Uh, if we put another combination in, let's try four. If the circle is 4, we're going to need 6 to make up 10. So that would mean that each triangle is worth 3. Because 4, add 3 is 7, add 3 is 10. And lastly then, let's go with 6. If we've got 6 here, we need 4 in total to make 10. So the triangle would be worth 2. Because 6, add 2, add 2 is 10. I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. It really does go a long way to helping me and my channel out. If you found that difficult, don't worry. It is one of the most challenging things on the paper and you still have time to improve and revise for your test. I've got loads of videos on this channel to help you, including SATS walkthroughs. And also look in the description. I've got links to some really helpful and inexpensive books that you can get to help you improve your SATS scores. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.